Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to this webinar all about the secrets of online sourcing uh, produced by Sourced Franchise. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So online sourcing, what are the secrets? Are there any secrets? You know, so many people are out there that are, who are sourcing online. Is there actually anything that, that isn't common knowledge? Well, I am here to tell you absolutely there is and I'm gonna let you know what they are today. So there's me training somebody um, talking about finances, as you can see on the whiteboard, um, with one of our franchisees, one of the people that I've uh, trained in property and, and uh, who I now support in making money out of property. So this is a series of five webinars over the next five days. So on this, because this is the first webinar, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Source. I'm just gonna give you some of, the, uh, some of the background on Source to let you know why we're the right people to let you know about this kind of stuff, uh, this kind of thing. Um, the experience that we've had and the experience and, and what that experience is, how we've gained that experience and what kind of things we're doing right now. So I'll do that. I'll do this on the first webinar um, today, but then I'm not going to run through the same information tomorrow and the next four days. Um, so let's go through this uh, right now, which is Source first started in January 2017. Uh, we came up with a, a, a plan, um, which was to start a franchise in the in the property sector because nobody else was doing it at that time uh, september 2017 is when that launched in february 2018 we hit our first 20 franchisees so pretty strong growth right at the beginning uh, in april of the same year we had 75,000 monthly website visitors so we, we were gathering a lot of attention we were making um we were putting out fantastic content we were finding excellent properties and our, our, our franchisees were really, were building their businesses and um, talking to a lot of investors. August, 2018, uh, we, we got uh, uh, approval from the Financial Conduct Authority, and that was specifically for our, our peer-to-peer -peer platform that at that time we were still, um, we were still creating. Uh, September, 2018, we started our podcast and we had a, a worldwide top five uh, podcast in the business chart on iTunes uh, straight away, which was really exciting. The podcast is still ongoing, so if you want more, uh, some additional free content and you like the audio format, have a look on, uh, we're on a few different channels, but uh, uh, if you go to iTunes, you'll find us on there. It's called the Sword Property Podcast. Uh, October 2018, we hit 50 franchisees, so that growth continued. In November 2018, we launched Sourced Capital, which is our peer-to-peer the, fa the financial arm of our company. Um, in February 20, 2019, uh, we launched our £150 million GDV development, which is uh, 585 flats that we're building in Manchester. And then in March 2019, we were approved for ISA and pension um, investment in our peer-to-peer -peer platform. So as you can see, we're I mean, if you look at the franchisees alone, we've got over 50 franchisees, and of those 50 franchisees, each one of them is growing a property, a property business. And each property business that they're growing is tailored specifically to them, their skill set, their needs, what they want to achieve out of property. So um, that alone is a huge amount of uh, a, a huge amount of work. Um, it's what I'm in, uh, I'm, I take most of my time doing, which is supporting the people that have come on board with us. Um, We've got, another, we've got other sections of the business, which are um, they raise the money. So the peer-to-peer -peer platform, the capital side is another section of the business. Those, those guys, they'll raise money in order to fund franchisees deals. And then we've got the development side, which is this uh, 150 million pound development. All of this information is available on our website if you want to go and have a look. And here it is. That's what it looks like when you click onto our website. So we've got property capital development care and franchise. Uh, we've, we've touched on capital, which is the peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer lending. Uh, we've touched on development, which is the 585 in Manchester. We've got others in the pipeline as well. We've touched on franchise, and we'll, we, we're not going to go any further into, into care uh, because it's not really relevant to what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so let's get cracking. And why am I the right person to, to tell you about all this information? I'm going to be hosting each one of the five webinars over the next five days. So why would I... Um, where, where does my experience come from in order to um, divulge these secrets? So my name is Chris Kirkwood. I'm the training and development director here at Source. So every franchisee I have trained here at Source. 
um, in, in terms of the support that they re require from us ongoing. I am the person that delivers that, that, that training, uh, that uh, ongoing support. And what that means is not only have I been involved in the, the property deals that I've done in my past, but also I've been, I'm currently involved in probably about between 10 and 15 property deals that are going through right now. So in terms of uh, um, uh, the experience that I've got, or I, I've, only, I've been in property for somewhere in between 10 and 15 years now, um, but in terms of years of experience, considering the number of deals that I've been through, I've, uh, I've got many more years uh, in comparison to a lot of other people that have been in for the same amount of time. So not only did I fund, uh, found, run and grow uh, multiple businesses in different business sectors, I've been involved in property for 10 plus years and in deals from 55,000 to 150 million, you know, I've actively been involved in these deals. So in terms of experience um, and deploying the right strategy at the right time or coming up with creative solutions, then I've, I've been through an awful lot of that. So, like I said, I've uh, tried my hand at many different property strategies, whatever's, you know, because I don't have a lot of control over the, the kind of deal that comes to me. Um, it's a really interesting way to way to work because uh, the deals that come to me, um, I'm not specifically looking for something that I know how to do very well. Um, it's, it could be something that I've never deployed before. It could be something that I haven't done for, for many years, but it's my responsibility to come up with the best solution um, for the franchisee. And that's what I spend most of my time doing now. So the franchisees will go out there. I, I will obviously train them. They'll go out into the real world. They will find deals. They'll send deals across to me. I'll assess those deals, both in terms of doing the numbers um, and assessing the strategy and working out if there's a more efficient way or a better way that they can, um, they can get a better profit margin out of those deals. So we've got lots of source franchisees. We've got, in the last 18 months, we've probably, well, I don't think it's one of these slides, but I think I probably assess somewhere near 3,000 uh, deals per year. Um, so that's an awful lot of property deals that I'm going through. And not just at a, a superficial level. You know, we're going into the serious numbers. We're getting confirmed numbers. We're getting, uh, we're putting the, the correct contracts and the correct finance in place in order to make these deals happen. Now, of course, all of those 3,000 deals don't go ahead um, because some of them simply don't work. Um, some of them they, we, we're not able to negotiate, but we get as many of those deals across the line as we possibly can. So there's a little bit about Source and why we're the right company to tell, to tell you about all of this information. A little bit about me and why I'm the right person within that company uh, to deliver this information to you. And now, so what is the information that we're going to go through in the next five days? So day one, which is where we are at the moment on the 4th of November, uh, that's going to be the secrets of online sourcing. The reason that we're doing that first is, I think, pretty obvious, that most people, when they come into property, that's where they see their first step. The first thing that they want to get into is online because it's easy, easily accessible, it's cheap, um, and it's, it's, there's a huge amount of information that you can get from online sourcing. So that's where we're going to start off. Tomorrow on the 5th, we're going to talk about commercial to residential um, and finding deals that other people don't even know exist. Uh, we'll go into, go into that a little bit more tomorrow. Day three, we're going to cover direct to vendor leads. So online sourcing is obviously properties that are on the market that we're going to talk about today. In two days time, we're going to talk about properties that aren't on the market. How do we get access to those properties that, again, other people have no idea about? How can your network help you generate those leads? Day number four on Thursday, we're going to talk about packaging your deals. What the ideal deal, uh, the ideal, uh, packaging should look like. How do you present those deals to investors? And on Friday, the last day is going to be about investor lead generation. Now, if you look at the um, look at the structure of this, with you know this is sort of follows the template of sourcing, packaging, and selling deals because that's what most people get into when they first come into property. Now, I want to make it absolutely clear that that isn't that isn't the only time that you should get into sourcing and packaging and selling deals. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I sold, uh, I sold a package deal that I'd been working on for a little bit of time. Um, it was running in the background. Um, it, it just happened to come across my path. I, you know, I didn't go out there actively looking for it, but because I'm, uh, I'm active myself in the property industry, this deal came across my path. I knew an investor that would be interested in it and I, ma I matched the two up and I made a 4,000 pound sourcing fee. Now we've got we've got developments of uh, 150 million uh, GDV going on. So 
um, you know, there's no necessity for me. There's, it's not it's not necessary for me to to go out and, and source deals in order to supplement my income. But I want to highlight that at any stage um, in your property progression, sourcing and packaging deals is a really great way to add to your cash flow. Now I'm not doing it at the moment, but I know that if I did do it, I could easily um, find, secure, and sell two, three, four deals every single month. Now, four thousand pounds—the the, the amount of money that I raised from from the last one—is uh, a little bit higher than average. I'd say that the average is about three thousand pounds. But you know, four deals per month times three thousand pounds—you're talking about twelve thousand pounds worth of income uh, every single month, which is really, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic way to get into property. Considering you don't need to put any of your own money into any of these deals. So that's why we're going to start off with this by this five-day course is about helping you get set up, um, either to get set up at the beginning of your property property journey, or if you're already in property and you're looking to supplement your, your income, because let's face it, a lot of strategies in, in property, um, the cash flow is fairly weak. So if you're looking to supplement your cash flow, this can be a fantastic strategy for you to do that as well. So whether you're at the beginning or, or looking to supplement your cash flow, this is exactly the right place to start. Now, the first question that you should be asking before we get into the information, before we get into the secrets is, do you need to do anything before you start sourcing? Or should you just go out there and source away? Do you just fire up right move and get, get scrolling? Because that's what a lot of people will do at the very start of their, of their property journey. And they'll be looking for something that jumps out at them. Well, yes, of course you should, because this is a business. And so you need to treat it like a business. So instead of just, just um, you know, basically blindfolding yourself and walking off in whatever direction your feet take you, you should create a plan. So if you want to just amble along and scroll and scroll and scroll, and as soon as something jumps out at you, then that's the thing that you're going to focus on. Then, you know, fine, go ahead. I guarantee there are more successful ways to operate your business. Because what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to push yourself to create that financial freedom, to create that income goal that you're looking for. And so what you should do is, you should sit yourself down and before you've even fired up your web browser, you need to start setting yourself some goals. When you set your goal, you will then create a plan. When you've created your plan, you need to visualize your success. And when you visualize your success, you need to execute in order to hit those goals. Now, it just so happens that we've prov provided or uh, produced, sorry, a free template, which is a, a PDF all about how to set your goals, the right way to set your goals and the right way to motivate yourself in order to produce the, the, the level of success that you're looking for. If you would like that template, just send us an email and we'll send that over to you. So let's say that you've downloaded that template from us and you've created that 12-month plan, where do you then start when it comes to uh, applying that 12-month plan to your properties? Well, the first thing that you need to ask yourself is what's the target for this month? And what's my sourcing plan? Because it's important to have a sourcing plan for that sourcing plan to tie in with what the monthly target is. Because if it ties into what the monthly target is, that's gonna tie into what the annual target is. And that's going to get you to the destination that you're looking for. You already need to have a strategy that you're focusing on. Now, in this case, we're going to be talking about um, online sourcing. And we're going to be talking about sourcing, securing, and selling those property deals. So that's the, strategy, that's the main strategy that we're focusing on. And also, what is your definition of success? So be very clear, be very precise with what you're looking to achieve out of this next 12 months in property because I guarantee if you ask for something fairly humble if you set your goal pretty small that's what you'll achieve if you ask for something huge and you set your sights very very high you've got a much better chance of achieving that and even if you miss that massive goal that you're going to set yourself even if you miss it by five percent you're still 95 percent of the way which will be a lot bigger and a lot further than if you set your goal small but understanding what that definition of success is, is a very key point. 
And then lastly, what you want to ask is how well established is your network? Are you already in Facebook groups? Are you already uh, online mixing with property people? Is your network a property sort of network? Or is everybody within your network um, um, coming from other industries and not really part of property? Because your network is the first key to your success. And we're going to get into that a little bit more when we're talking about director vendor leads on Wednesday. So you're getting into property, you've set your goals, you know where you want to be, where are you going to look for the deals? Well, the most common place to look for deals is estate agents, right? And that would be a great place to start because estate agents typically control 95% of all sales that go through residential property. So because they control most of the stock, a vast, vast majority of the stock, they are by far the best place to start. Where do deals come from? Well, I'm sure you've seen most of these, you know, it's not this part is not going to come as a surprise to you. You've got on the market, which is the estate agent run uh, portal. You've got Zoopla, you've got Rightmove, you've got gum, places like Gumtree and you've got Prime Location. Now we're going to start with the biggest. And so we're going to start with Rightmove. Although actually thinking about it, the, uh, the techniques that we're going to learn are available on other portals as well. And you'll understand that when we, uh, when we get to me showing you how to use Rightmove the right way. So where do deals come from? How do most sources use Rightmove? Well, I know, I know because I talk to people, I talk to sources, I talk to a lot of people who I, have, I haven't trained, and they'll tell me that they're gonna spend the morning scrolling through Rightmove, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and looking, up, looking at picture after picture after picture until something drop, jumps out at them. So they're spending a huge amount of time scrolling. And what that means is, they're being incred incredibly inefficient with their time because they're looking at the same properties time and time and time again. And also, once you're scrolling, it's very easy to zone out, to zone out and pay attention to something else. It's really hard to keep your attention on exactly what you're looking for if you're looking at thousands and thousands of properties. So there's got to be a better way, right? Well, it just so happens there is. And this is the first thing that I tell everybody when, they, when, they, when they're starting up sourcing property in order to trade on or to add to their own portfolio, I think it's by far the best thing to do to start off with looking for properties that are depressed in value. Now, I'm being careful not to use the term BMV because there's a lot of people that firstly don't really agree with the term BMV and I can see where they're coming from. So having a depressed value property um, is a is a neater way i think is a cleaner way of describing what the what the opportunity will be with that property so when we're searching to start off with we're looking at the keyword search and if you've never used the right move keyword search i'm going to show you how to do it i'm going to show you how to do it correctly and then when you've set up the keyword search for a specific area you'll then set up set up a daily alert and that daily alert what that will do is it will tell you when new properties have been listed in that area under the criteria that you set for your search. So what that means is, if, you go, if you're going to search on Monday and Thursday, let's say, and in your area, you've got 2000 properties. Of those 2000 properties that you look through on Monday, probably about 1600, 1700 are still gonna be there on Thursday. So if you're gonna do the scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, You've just looked at 1600 properties on Thursday that you didn't need to because you've seen them before and you discounted them. A far cleaner way to run through that process is to look through the, the 2000 properties on the Monday and then set up a daily alert to let you know of new properties that are listed under those, under those criteria in that area every day. And you can create a, day, uh, a daily alert um, an actual alert for every property that's listed, or you can create a couple of other alerts. My preference is a daily alert. So you get one email from the portal every day with the new properties that are listed in that area. So as a comparison, on Monday, you'll look at 2000 properties. On Thursday, when you compile Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays daily alert email, you might be looking at 30, 40, or 50 properties because they're the new ones that have come on. And it's far easier 
quicker, cleaner and more efficient for you to look through those 50 properties than it is to re-scroll through an, an, another 2,000 in order to see some that are the new ones on there. Does that make sense? I hope so. So let's have a look at Rightmove. So let's jump out of the uh, presentation and let's go to Rightmove. So let's, uh, let's choose, uh, I haven't given this any thought whatsoever, let's choose leads as an example. So yeah, just leads. So up here, we've got the minimum price, maximum price, beds, uh, property type. We've got no filters on there whatsoever. But down here, we have the keywords. Now, let's have a look at keywords. The ones that I'm going to choose are modernization, with an additional capital letter, letter in there, refurb, uh, ishment, and improve. So you get the choice of three keywords. And because I'm looking for something that's depressed in value, I'm looking for something where the estate agent has written in their, uh, in, in the, uh, the notes of the property that it requires modernization or it requires refurbishment or it, it needs to be improved. So that's what I'm looking for. Now, I'm sure if you spent five minutes now with a piece of paper and a pen, you'd be able to think of loads of other terms that estate agents use to describe a house that's basically a fixer-upper. And it might be that in your area, these keywords don't work, but I guarantee there will be keywords that work that mean the same thing. So what you should do is you should test out a few keywords and see what produces the best result. Now, it's important to note that if I cho chose a minimum price of £100,000 and a maximum price of £200,000, I could then create an alert based on those search criteria. So I'd only get something between £100,000 and £200,000. These keywords down here are not a search term, they're just a filter. So I've got the same amount of properties that have shown up on Rightmove. It's just that they're ordered in a different way. And so what I need to do is I need to be very careful that I'm not, um, that I'm only looking at the properties that have got these, one of these three keywords in the description. So let me show you how to do that. So this is the first property because this is an advert, so it doesn't count. So this is the first property, okay? Now, as you can see, the keywords are written down here and I've got strike to improve. So that means that modernization and refurbishment or a conjugation of those words, of that word, each one of those words, um, is in that description. Now, the reason that this one has shown up first is because I'm matching two keywords. And so Rightmove will order all of these properties based on how many keywords I'm matching. So the first ones that show up will be the matching two keywords. And then once I've been through all of, the, all of the properties matching two keywords, it then moves on to matching one keyword. And it'll change from it, the, the keyword with modernization, and then it'll be refurbishment, and then it'll be improved. And the way that it works is within the two keywords matching, it then works by price. So the next property down, we haven't seen the next property down, but it'll be cheaper than this one. So there you go. So the most expensive property with the most keywords comes up at the top. And what you would then do is you would then scroll down and you would identify the properties that have got, um, that jump out at you. And we'll go through exactly what's gonna jump out at you in just a second. But I hope all of that makes sense. So you don't have any of these filters on at the top, you just use the keywords down here. Now, if you create that alert, which you can do by clicking on that bell right there. And like I said, I'd go for daily, that one there. If you click on daily, it will, it will send you properties matching everything on that top black line. So anything that's listed in leads, we haven't set the minimum and maximum price, we haven't set the bedrooms, we haven't set the property type. So anything, any new property that's listed in Leeds will come through to you. Now, if you want to change that, you do that on the black line at the top and then you create the alert. Now, I would just leave it open because I'm quite happy to spend my time looking at 50 properties instead of, say, 40 properties. I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference, but I'm happy to look at those additional 10 on the off chance that there's an opportunity in there. 
when you then get those emails, you can either, uh, you could, you'll go through that email because all the, the property will be listed in that email as it is seen in Rightly. So you'll be able to have a look through it in the way that we're going to look through it now. But when you're doing a big search like this, using these keywords as a start to filter through to mean that you don't have to look at 2000 properties, um, judging, them, judging them exactly the same, um, it is removed from you. So it's a far more efficient way for you to do it. Okay, so let's, let's start to have a look through and see exactly which, which properties we're gonna click on. So what I'm looking for is an interior shot. I'm really not interested in what the house looks like from the outside because it doesn't really tell me that much information. What I'm interested in is the interior because the interior tells me whether there's an uplift in value to be had. Now from this one, it looks pretty neat um, and there's not much, I don't think there's much more scope to take that property, do anything with it and then uplift the value. And what I'm looking for, like I said, is depressed value. You could potentially put an extension on this house and um and uplift the value but the chances of finding one like that because you can't identify that very easily from the pictures is so small that i'm just discounting that as a strategy entirely because it's it's again you're running a business we need you to be efficient so i'm going to discount that completely because i'm i'm looking for the interior shots where there's an uplift in value to be had now this one again looks pretty looks fairly tidy uh, everything looks neat um, the carpet seems to be doing a weird thing but it, uh, that, that looks like it's the way that it's been hoovered um, so there's nothing to be had there again not much not much to be done there and definitely that's just being refurbed so I'm not interested in that one now this one it looks like it's got tiles on the floor in the kitchen so let's have a closer look at this one this is the first one that's really uh, jumped out out at me at all so let's have a look It's a little, well, the kitchen units look pretty good, don't they? But it's a little bit, tiny bit dated, but not, no, I don't, again, I don't think there's much, much of an uplift to be had there. Second one, uh, this is the next one that jumps out. So let's have a look at this one. So first of all, uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of information from the front that, you know, the front door looks fairly tired, right? Uh, it looks like it hasn't been decorated for quite a while. That's quite dated wallpaper. Uh, these units are quite dated, that beach effect hasn't been around for quite a while. And so, yeah, that looks like there might be an uplift in value. So let's go and have a quick look at the, at the uh, comparables down here. We've got 292.70.206, offers over 300. So let's forget the one. And that's how you would then continue to scroll. Now, these, uh, this one um, hasn't got an interior shot. So I am going to have to click on that one just because I'm interested to find out if there's anything going on in the interior. Usually, um, no interior uh, photograph means that the, the interior is pretty dated. But in this case, it's not the case. That looked pretty good. Uh, again, pretty good. And that looks like it might be a bit dated. So here's another one. So we click on that one because of the interior shot. And yeah, that one's definitely dated. So again, We'd go down here, we'd check on the comparables, and then we would work out whether that property is worth pursuing or not. That's definitely dated, definitely an opportunity. That could be, uh, that could be really interesting. Was on the market for 260 on, in June. So that's been on for, more, for about six months now as well. So that's definitely an opportunity. We found that within the first eight properties that we've looked at, roughly. And so that, that is how you would first start to source. So we're, we're still on modernization and refurbishment is the keywords as we continue to scroll down. And just here, you can see it's changed. So modernization and refurbishment has gone to modernization and improve and refurbishment isn't in these keywords. So you can see we've gone from a 99,000 uh, £99, pound property to a 740,000 pound property. We've jumped back up because it's, it's now organizing based on these two keywords, <clears throat> which means we start at the most expensive again. And that's how this filter works. Now, what that filter is stopping you having to do is it's stopping you having to look through 42 pages of properties. And again, down here, you can see that we've changed again. Now we're looking at refurbishment and improving. So let's go on to page two 
and just see. Now what's going to happen somewhere on page two probably, there we go, right here, is that two of the keywords have gone. Well now we're only matching one keyword. So again we've jumped up in price to 1.1 million. Now if we keep on scrolling down, what will happen is it'll have no keywords. But you've got to be quite vigilant to, to notice that because it's quite a subtle change. You'll just have a strike through there as well. And then the price will jump up over here and um, you'll have no keywords. Now, if you keep on searching at that point, you'll, you are effectively wasting your time. So what you need to do is keep an eye out for when all three of the keywords get a strike through and you know that you've gone through that keyword search and anything with uh, those three keywords that we've had up here, that's finished, okay? So there are other keywords that you can use in order to, uh, to find different properties that are gonna give you different, different um, uh, opportunities. For instance, cash buyers only. Um, I put that all in one keyword box. Let me show you how I would write that in, just to make sure that you get it the right way. Because if I put it in uh, like this, it means that it searches for that phrase it, instead of putting cash and then buyers and then only. So if I put it in like that, it means it's searching for that, for that phrase, and that's going to start um, uh, ordering, property, ordering the properties in a different way. So when you start to search using the keyword, sit down for 10 minutes, write out all of the keywords that you can, write out all of the, the, potential, um, the potential language that an estate agent would use in order to, um, to you know, use their code to let you know what's, what exactly is going on with that property because obviously requires modernization or requires refurbishment is just saying it's a bit of a tip. Um, and this is a potential, this is a potential for you to make an uplift on the value. So whatever the, the agents are going to use as a code, sit down, write it out, search in your area and use those different keywords to see what kind of opportunities come up. Because what works in, I don't know, Norwich is gonna be different in language to what works in Liverpool. So have a look in your area and see, um, see what works. Right, let's head back to the presentation. <clears throat> so I hope that all makes sense. Keywords, incredibly strong way for you to start your property searches. Now, when, if you are gonna take this into, um, into sourcing for property to, to package and sell on, <clears throat> like I've said a couple of times, this is a business. And the, the parts of your business are going to be finding properties, doing your due diligence on the properties, finding investors, doing your due diligence on the investors, and then matching those, those together. When an when a investor's requirement matches a property that you've found, you're putting them together and you're, you're coming up with a solution. Now at this stage, what, what can quite frequently happen to people that start that process is that they get stuck working on the part of the business that they enjoy. Now, if you're a very gregarious person, you might love going out and talking to people. And so it'll be very difficult to take you away from walking into estate agents day after day after day um, because you just like having a chat with people. You like get, getting to know people. If you're a very numbers, a very detail driven person, then you might absolutely love sourcing online and doing your due, due diligence. But when it comes to going out there and talking to people and meeting investors for coffee, it's a much harder thing to get you to do that kind of stuff because you feel safe and you feel secure and you feel happy doing the thing that you're good at, which is looking on a computer. Now, this is a business. You're going to have to do both. So you need to be self-aware that your business requires all of those things to get, um, to get off the ground and to start making you the money that you require. And so you need to pay equal uh, attention to each part of that business. And if what you're doing is finding properties and then not doing anything with them, there's got to be something in your head that triggers and you think, okay, I'm getting to this point and then I keep, I keep on losing these properties because I'm not finding the investor. Therefore, I need to, I need to re-strategize. I need to think about exactly how I'm meeting investors and do it in a way that, that uh, not only I feel comfortable with, but helps me grow my business. So it's all about being efficient and you start that by being self-aware. Now, when you're building your business, of, of course you should try and automate and, um, uh, and take the responsibility away from you to do like the scrolling. You know, what we're doing in a keyword search is we're just automating that process, uh, keyword search and then the daily alert. 
So instead of scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, it means that you're going to free up your time and your time is going to be much more efficient at searching. But you don't want to spend that time that you've just freed up by the pool or playing another round of golf. It means that you've created more time for the other parts of your business, for the parts of the business that potentially can't be automated. And there will be parts of your business that can't be automated. For instance, talking to an investor, building up your credibility with that investor, because that investor might buy the next 10 properties that you find off you, um, that, that, they, that you find, sorry. So you need to put your time, you need to spend your time wisely once you automate processes to then increase your business faster, to really get that exponential growth that will uh, get you to your goals much, much quicker. So I've shown you one way of um, searching for properties on Rightmove by using the keyword search and exactly what I look for when I first start searching in an area. Because what will happen with some franchisees, they might say, um, you know, what, I'll, I'll ask them for some feedback and I'll say, you know, what's it like in your area? What's the market like this week? You know, are, are there plenty of new, is there plenty of new stock on the market? You know, what's going on? And they'll feedback and say, oh, you know, I'm finding, this, I'm finding it difficult this week. Um, I just can't seem to find anything. And I absolutely love it when people say that to me. It's like a red rag to a bull because I think, okay, look, what, give me 10 minutes. Let's see what we can come up with. And then I'll start searching in their area for them. And that's the very first thing that I do every time, that keyword search. And in most cases, it will generate at least 15 to 20 new property leads that that franchisee hasn't seen before. So time after time, that search works. But what else can we do? Now, have you heard of title splits? Because if you haven't, we're going to run through it very quickly now, and I'm going to show you how to find the title split. So let's go back to right move. Let's go back to leads, and let's get rid of these keywords. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stay on leads, and then we're going to go on to property type, and we're going to choose detached, semi-detached, and terrace. So what we're searching for here is houses. These are all houses that are for sale in Leeds. And we've lost about a thousand off our list there because we were on about 2,300. So we've lost about a thousand properties off our list. Now what, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go into the keyword search. And we're gonna search for flats and apartments. So what does that mean? That means that we're searching for houses or they're, they're listed as an entire house for sale but somewhere in the description, the estate agent has written flats or apartments. So what does that mean? It means that the person that owns that property has probably split it into flats or apartments, but they haven't split the title. So all of those flats and all of those apartments are still on one title. And he's selling that property as an entire property because that's what title he can sell. Now it's actually fairly, fairly straightforward in order to get control of a property like that, split the title and then sell off those flats or those apartments individually. And what that usually means is that you're gonna make an uplift in the value. Because let's say that you've got four flats in a property and each one of those flats is worth 150,000 pounds. That means that the GDV of that property would be 600,000 pounds. But that property itself might, might be on the market because the comparable bricks and mortar value of that property might be 450,000 pounds. So what you could do is you could buy that property for 450,000 pounds, run through the fairly straightforward process of doing the title split and then sell off the units individually for 600,000 pounds, making a profit of, on these high level numbers, <clears throat> making a profit of about 150,000 pounds. That's exactly what we're searching for here. And we're using the search filters on Rightmove in order to show us these properties. So again, in Leeds, flats, apartments, property type, we've got three filters on there and we're just gonna scroll through. And just like before, you've got the, the, the keyword search down here and you've got it in order of price. So let's scroll down and see where we are. There we go, third one, is that the third one down? We're not counting the top one because it's an advert. One, two, three, it's the fourth one down. The fourth one down is on the market for a, a, a pound short of a million offering not four retail units and nine professional apartments. So this is all for sale on one title. 
So that's a fantastic opportunity. What you need to then do now is then do your, your due diligence and find out if there's any margin to be made in that, in that property. Uh, that looks like it's a development opportunity for flats and apartments. Uh, let's just keep scrolling down. We'll find one more. There we go. Nine bedroom. Uh, being split into two apartments. There you go. So that you've got two apartments there, a four bed and a five bed. So you've got two sort of a mini HMO, a standard size HMO, and they're split into two, two apartments. So there you go. First page, we found two really, really great property leads straight away. Now, if I kept on going through this, I'd probably find between 20 and 30 in leads, I would have thought from these two strategies alone, from using Rightmove as um, finding a depressed valuation and then using Rightmove for, uh, for title splits. In fact, in Leeds, you're probably looking at between 30 and 40. Now, if, you're, if your town, if, if the place, your gold mine area, the place that you're sourcing is comparable in size to Leeds, then we've just generated a huge amount of uh, property leads for you just using those two strategies. So, once you're set up, what do you then do? So once you've found those properties, what do you then do? How do you grow your business? So the way that we use these properties is we use them as icebreakers, because even if you're gonna be online sourcing, the, the secret to growing your business is all about building relationships. So what's the main secret to online sourcing? It's human contact. And when you're making human contact, you need to be consistent. Because when you're making human contact, when you're building relationships with people who potentially could give you your next 20 or 30 deals, then they're going to judge you based on your behavior. And if you make contact a couple of times and then you disappear off the face of the earth, that's a judgment that they're going to make of you. So what you need to do is when you're establishing contact with people is you need to be consistent with your contact. And you should also tell them exactly what you're doing. So I explain to them what you're looking for, what kind of properties you're looking for. Um, I, you can identify other strategies that you're interested in and then maintain contact with them. Now, when you really find a, uh, when you find a good con uh, prospect, like I just said, we, uh, you're gonna be doing your due diligence. Now, I've recorded a webinar on due diligence. Um, I just did it last week, actually, and we've, what we've done is we've uh, downloaded it and we've put it onto YouTube. So due diligence comes in four separate stages. You've got, first of all, the overview, then you've got red flags, you've got numbers, and you've got certainty. And that's the, that's the, uh, they're the steps that you need to walk through in order to do your due diligence. If you want to have a look at that webinar, go over to our YouTube channel. Surprisingly, it's called Sourced. And the webinar is called How to Analyze Your Property Deals. Set aside about an hour. I think it's about an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes. Um, ha have a piece of paper and a pen and a calculator with you and go through that webinar and learn how to do, do your due diligence properly. Um, we're gonna get to this when we're presenting the deals to the investors. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. The webinar specifically about due diligence goes into it in much more detail. So if you want a, a, a better depth of understanding of due diligence, I would definitely head over to that webinar. And once you're there, once you're on our YouTube channel, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we're going to be putting lots more videos out there. Um, uh, it's all free content. It's all fantastically uh, usable, actionable content. So go over there and have a look and uh, watch that webinar. So what do you then do once you find a deal that works? Well, you can sell it on, like we've said about. How you sell it on depends on what kind of deal it is and how you secure it. How you secure it depends on your knowledge of the contracts and what contracts are available to you. If you want to do that deal yourself, that depends on your knowledge of finance and how you can use these finance, finance options to add that property to your portfolio. Now, there's no secret in, in finance in property. These are the five different ways that you can uh, finance a property deal. You've got bridging, peer-to-peer, -peer, a JV, residential mortgage or commercial mortgage. And the combination of those finance options could mean that you can add a property to your portfolio without spending an, uh, any of your own money. Um, the, those financial options can bring you a huge amount of freedom. And it would certainly mean that you wouldn't need to have 25% for every single deposit 
that you're going to um, pay in order to secure properties to yourself. So we're going to go into finance in, um, uh, in probably another webinar. It's not the place for it here because we're talking about sourcing and, and, and different uh, secrets of online sourcing. But look out for this webinar in the future if, if you're interested in adding properties to your portfolio. And these are the contract. These are just some of the contracts that are available to you. I just had a, a quick 30 second brainstorm. So you've got sales contracts, ASTs, common law tenancies, lease contracts, option contracts, subject to exchange with delayed completion, exchange with no deposit. You've got lots of different ways of structuring deals in order to add it to your portfolio. And what do franchisees do when they when they come up with these opportunities? So they, they'll find an opportunity, they'll crunch the numbers based on the way that we teach them to do their due diligence. They'll then send it over to us for analysis and we'll, we'll have a look through the numbers, just verify that what they're doing is the right thing, verify that they're running the right structure. And then they have two options. They can sell the opportunity for a fee, in which case we would market it out for them to our, our investor list of 130,000 people or they can buy it themselves. And if they're gonna buy it themselves, we'll help them find the right finance to knit that deal together. And if they're gonna sell it, we, we uh, like I said, we pass it to the marketing team. And if we're gonna help them buy it, then uh, we'll find the right finance. Potentially it could be us. We'll give them a quote for, the, for, for, for financing that deal. And our finance works on 70% of the GDV as a, rough, as a rough rule of thumb, which can open up a huge amount of opportunity for them. Um, but if we're not the right finance for, for a deal, we'll still go out there and find the right finance in order to help them uh, facilitate that deal. Now, Sourced are the UK's largest uh, network of property investment specialists based all around the country. We've got over 50 offices. We've got the exclusive lending that we've just talked about. We've got events across the country as well. So it's another, yet another uh, fantastic free resource for you. We've got events in London, Derby, um, Manchester, and Leeds. Uh, these are events where if you've got property, you can take your property there and, and, sh and uh, try and sell it to investors. If you're an investor, there will be properties there for you to, for you to buy. And we've got, obviously we go from, from selling deals and sourcing deals and selling them on up to huge developments of uh, 585 flats. So we've got, a, we've got knowledge and experience all the way through the spectrum of property investment. Now our training, uh, we've obviously gone through this fairly quickly. Um, our training usually lasts five days. Um, we go through a five day training course right at the beginning of the, of the, of the franchise. And then after that, we, we go through that business and goal setting uh, template, exactly like we're gonna give to you. We go through that process with every single one of our franchisees to make sure that we understand what they want to achieve and make sure they understand what daily activity is necessary for them to achieve their goals. You know, if somebody comes to me with, with goals of 10 million pounds or, or half a million pounds, it really doesn't matter to me. As long as they understand what is necessary to make that money and they can put that time and effort in, then I'm happy to write that plan with them. We then have one-to-one -one mentoring and one-to-one -one, uh, one -one viewings um, with the franchisee, basically supporting them through that journey of making that money. And then we have quarterly events. So every quarter we put on um, a different training for them to um, go over some of the stuff that they've learned about before to make sure that they understand it thoroughly or a uh, brand new training uh, in order to um, open up their, their eyes to what, what um, opportunity is available to them. So we're a uni unique brand. Nobody's got the amount of stuff going on that we have going on. Nobody has the amount of opportunity from one place that we have. And what we give our franchisees is a, is a, is a territory of 40,000 households. Uh, they have the comprehensive week-long training. Uh, we've got a proven biz business model, which is out there making people money as we speak. And we've got the website attracting thousands of people every single month. And what do we give our franchisees? Well, we give them property leads. We give them investor leads. Uh, we manage their email campaigns to generate more leads for them when they're selling something or selling an opportunity. We've got national brand marketing, we've got a regional blog, we've got access to exclusive funding, which is a huge benefit. Quarterly events, we've got the SIN management if you wanted to host your own networking event, and then we've got a huge um, uh, folder of legal documents that you can use from us as well. And we work on the basis that we make money when our franchisees make money. So 
that's that's uh, that's the order that it goes in. Uh, that the franchisee must make money and then will make money. So we're all about the success of everybody that's part, that comes under our brand. So that's webinar number one. Some secrets of online online sourcing. So we've gone through a couple of absolute rip snorting um, secrets uh, using Rightmove, just the way that you use Rightmove. I hope it's been an eye opener for you. I hope it's helped you. If you've got any questions, chris.kirkwood at source.co is my email address. And the next webinar uh, we will be putting on tomorrow, uh, on Tuesday. So make sure that you're signed up for every single one of these webinars because they're all going to be uh, hugely valuable. And tomorrow we're going to be talking about commercial conversions. So thank you very much for your time today. It's a pleasure to spend my afternoon with you and I will see you again tomorrow. Thanks.